Thank you, Lord, for this word coming forth, Lord. Father, we know that it's come from you, Lord. Father, every ear that's listening, God. Father, we ask you to open the ear like you opened the Samuel, God. We ask you to open the ears of your people, Lord. Father, you said your sheep hear your voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow, God. Father, we ask for the anointing to come, Lord, that breaks the yoke, Lord. Father, that your word is like a hammer that breaks the hard rock into pieces, God. And we continue to continue. And I think that's what that word that you sent was that we're missing. I think that is really the word of God that's going to break the slate. Because worship opens up the heavens, but I think it's going to break break the ground, the hard ground. And it said our hearts are hard like the like a rock and the, and the word of God hits it. And then the worship will come after that for real. The word of God, there's a revival of truth coming out everywhere. And we thank you, Father. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we ask you, we thank you for your blood, Lord. Father, we know that we're not perfect, but you are, and your word is, God. Let us bring it forth with all, all seriousness, all humility, and all zeal. And Father God, we will follow your word, and we'll eat it, and we'll eat it, and we'll eat it, and we'll have life in us, Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you continue to give us revelation, insight, direction, Set us apart with your word, God, and protect us. All the spirits out there, there's so many spirits, but you can be right under the one spirit that can cover you in Psalms 91. Or you can be out there and have all these voices coming everywhere, or you can learn his voice. Today's message is strange voice. And a while back I preached kind of one, but this is totally a little bit different way. Speaking, preaching, prophesying, all have a sound, but where does it come from? It can come from you, it can come from Satan, and it can come from God. In this message, we'll learn how to discern the voice of God. We'll actually learn, we're going to give a revelation so we can seek only His voice. It can be truth and still come from Satan. It can be the Word of God and still come from Satan. It can... Make you feel good and still come from Satan. There's too much confusion in the body of Christ, and it's time to hear his voice only. God's voice will not contradict God's word. God's voice will always point you to the cross. It will not misfocus or draw attention to man or flesh. It will not make truth that's misrepresented or, uh, or misfocused. John 10, Verily I say unto you, He that entered the door, not the door, into the sheepfold, but climbeth any other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entered the door, Jesus is the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. Him that opened the door, the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls them and his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And they putteth forth his own sheep, and goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. God's saying in this season, you need to know his voice. It's not just going to come automatically. You, you probably knew his voice more when you first got saved. And all these other voices and confusion and different doctrines and all these things come and cloud your mind, cloud your focus and come in there and bring confusion where God's voice is just another voice and it causes confusion. And the stranger will they not follow, but they will flee from him for they know not the voice of a stranger. The parable Jesus spoke unto them. But they understood not the things which he spoke unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever entered before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go and go out and find pastor. The thief comes, not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life, and that your life might be more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not, 
and not a shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them, and scatter the sheep. It's talking about teachers, hirelings, people that don't care about the sheep, they just care about money, they just care about being important, being famous, getting on Charisma Magazine, seeing prophecies here and there, whatever, but they're not dealing with people, setting free, casting demons out, telling them this, pointing them to the cross, pointing them to, to the rock, pointing them to a house that's built on the rock. Not Elijah list prophets. He that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and ca catches them and scatter the sheep. The hireling fleeth, fleeth because he's a hireling and cares not for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know, are known of me, and the Father know me, and that I am the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And how many know God has voices on the earth? And they need to be His voices that speak from these pulpits. And God's voice will come through His prophets, apostles, teachers. And the other voices could come through the prophets, supposedly apostles and teachers. As the Father knows me, I even know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring in, that they hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. The Bible talks about the Jew and the Gentile becoming one new man in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. This time he's talking to the Jews, I believe. Therefore does the Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. No man take it from me. I lay it down myself. I have no power to lay it it down and I have power to take it up I have power to lay it down I have power to take it up the commandment I have received from my father there is a there was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings yeah that's who they and many of them said he has a devil that's what they're gonna tell you when you he's speaking the voice of God if they don't know your voice they don't know his voice and it's his voice they'll say you have a devil They'll say you're not of God. Doesn't mean it's they're right. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And in Jerusalem, another thing he said before, can Satan cast out Satan? Can the devil cast demons out of himself? No. And they came to the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long does you make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered and said, I told you, but you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Signs and wonders that will follow the word will bear witness. I'm not talking about signs and wonders of signs and wonders. I'm talking about signs and wonders of... See, so one thing Satan can't do, he can't save people. He can't cast demons out. And he, he can't he can't save them, cast demons out. He can't do that. He sins to destroy. He can heal people. He can do little goosebumps. He can make feelings, false feelings. He can counterfeit uh, feelings of the Holy Spirit. He can make you laugh. He can make you cry, but he can't convert you. Those are the real signs that you see when you run into someone and their life gets changed and they're and on fire for Jesus. You know that it's the God speaking. That's the major sign. And Jesus said in Mark uh, 15, uh, verse uh, Mark 16, verse 15 through 20, that he said. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. will cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, and speak with new tongues, because they got a new born again. Other signs too, God does other things, but I see that those are some things that Satan can't do is convert somebody and save them. So it's one of the greatest miracles. Other things can be counterfeit. That's why you need to know the voice and you need to know the, so when the miracles do the healing, you match it up with the voice. If they're preaching another gospel and there's healing, I would be be careful if that is the devil or not. But if they're preaching the word, Satan, Satan can't back the word. God backs the word. So you got to know the word. And to know the word, you got to know him. And he's the spirit. Spirit and truth. We're worshiping him, coming out and to worship him in spirit and truth. And that's just how it's going to be. And the enemy doesn't like it. And the enemy wants to shut your mouth. But God's going to 
open your mouth and you're going to roar. I give my life unto them, eternal life, that they may never perish, neither shall they, any man pluck them out of, any man pluck them out. He didn't even say Satan here. Any man pluck them out. You know what he's talking about? Even Satan himself can dress himself up as a minister of righteousness and deceive many. The Bible says that Satan has uh, is, uh, false apostles among you, but you know them. They're, you found them liars. Why? Well, you got to know his voice. You got to know the word. And that's how many are deceived. They're not seeking the word. They're not getting filled with the word. And all they're doing is relying on somebody. That somebody might get off and might get deceived. And we're seeing it today all over the place. People that are following the word and everything. It's like, what are they? Five years later, it's like, what happened? It's all about this now? What happened? You were cast out demons. Now you're you're trying to get rich. What's that's not what's going on? Wait a second. God doesn't go backwards. It's first, 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 first. He is very, very being very aggressive right now. He's trying to get as many sheep in his fold before the storm comes in this country, in this in this world. People are now speaking about major things happening, and the church is acting like everything's okay. My sheep hear my voice, and, and they know, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they will not never perish. My Father gave them to me, and is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. And then Jesus took up the stones again to stone. Then they took up, and the Jews took up the stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them and said, Many good works have I showed you from the Father. For which of those works you stone me? So you're stoning me for speaking the truth. You're stoning me for healing the sick. You're stoning me for, because you know what? You don't know the Father. That's the sign right there. You don't know him. You attack a messenger that's from God, and you think you're of God too? You don't know him. Jesus answered, many good works I've shown you, and you stone me for this. And he said, the good work you stone me. And he says, because thou art being a man, make it thyself God. They're calling him a blasphemer. And Jesus said unto them, it is written in the law, I said, that you are little G's, gods. If he is called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, capital, big letter God, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him, from the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemes because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though I believe not, believe thy works that you may know and believe that the Father and me and I are, and I am him. The Father's in me and I am him. And we know it's Christ in us and we're in him. We have the same thing going on with Jesus, but we have the soul that we're, God is delivering us from. But if I do, though you believe me not, and believe the works that I do, know that believe that the Father is in me, and I am in him. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond the Jordan into a place where John at first baptized. There he abode, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spoke of this man were true, and many believed on him there. Voices. We can hear even other voices, even if we love Jesus. Matthew sixteen fifteen through twenty eight says, "He saith unto them, But I say you that I am." Simon Peter answered and said. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed us unto thee, but thy Father in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, upon this rock, wasn't upon Peter, Peter's not the rock, upon the revelation that Jesus is Christ. The Catholics got that all a little mixed up. And probably because he said Petra is rock and something probably, you know, but we need a spirit, but God would build nothing on any man. 
all the apostles were just men, we're just men. God's going to use us to use somebody. It doesn't, matter. It doesn't make them the rock. Jesus is the rock and the revelation of him being the Christ. And I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto them the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever they loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And they told the disciples, tell no man that I am Jesus the Christ. <coughs> so look at that. Peter, not yet converted. Simple man walking with Jesus was, was able to get a revelation from God. Not yet with the baptism of the Holy Spirit was able to get a revelation from God right there and come and show all the rest of them up. Boom, he got it. And he was waiting on that. It was Peter. But not too much time later, that's what happened with Peter. Jesus was walking and he knew the voices that were coming out of different people. And the disciples trusted him. Look what just happened now. He's talking about strange voices. But he turned and said unto Peter, get, and okay, so, and from then forth began and show unto the disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things and the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So Peter started rebuking Jesus, saying, Be thou far from there, Lord, this shall not be done unto thee. Sounds so good. What a good guy. What was the problem there? Jesus had a mission. Jesus had a purpose. Jesus was called to go to the cross. And he didn't need people to convince him that to save his life. He needed people to say, you can do it, Jesus. You were born for this. This is what you're called to do. You got to do it, Jesus. He didn't need someone so he sees like, yeah, maybe I don't need to go to the cross. Maybe I, you know. Right away, he had to shut that voice down. He shut it down because it didn't come from the Father. It didn't come from the Holy Spirit. So what did he say? He said, there are, you are an offense. He said, get behind me, Satan. Wow. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that are of God, and, but the things that are of man. And God told me that's where the majority of the church is right now. Everything they say is about man. Everything they say about this world. How to get rich. How to do this. How to do that. and Not, not how to pick up your cross and deny yourself so God can use you in the glory. In, in the last days so people can get saved. And I want to tell you how you can still slide into heaven with greasy grace and still keep your life. But Jesus has said himself, my will is to come here and show you what I've done. You have to do it too. Pick up your cross, deny yourself, and also what you see me do, I'm going to expect you to do it too. But he's going to say, I'm going to help you. And when you do this, that's what the gospel is. And all the other scriptures just go along for that. You can't pluck one out and say, hey, this is, this is good for today. You know, I want, to, I want something... Uh, Proclaim it and name it, and I need a new car. And God says, "Whatever I ask, I shall have it." If I, that's what you know. It's ridiculous stuff going on out there. Take this scripture, this scripture, and throw your business here and do this and all that. It's called doctrines of devils. Anything that points you to another direction than the cross is not from God. And that's just how it is. And and many and this is the message of the hour, because we have major things starting to happen, and we need to know that. And then we need to know that. If you're young in Christ, you might miss it, just like Peter. Called to be an apostle. Said, you're going to be one of my best men. He humbled him. Peter got all excited. Oh, yeah, I was the one. Look, I just got a revelation. I hear from God. I'm great. I hear from God. Look at that. I got, look at you guys. Huh, I'm going to be there. Who wants to be the greatest? Peter said, you're going to make this. You're going to make statues. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Peter didn't even know what was going on. Jesus had to bring him right down off his little lofty place. He said, get behind me, Satan, because now, yeah, you heard from God, but now look, you're talking out of your flesh. You're talking from the enemy. You're an offense into me. That's what she's going to say right here. So don't think that we, if Peter can't talk from the enemy, that we can. Who do we think we are? We need to test, test what we say lines up to the word. And so we know the word fully. We shouldn't even be speaking of God. And that's what it says. Oh, you got, yeah, use your gift, but you got to do it. And you got to be ready to know that it might not be God. Because Jesus couldn't be fooled. I'm going to take you deep into this. And he said, You are an offense unto me. Thou savest the things that, not of the things that are of God, but the things that are of men and his disciples. If any man come unto me, let not him deny himself. Right there is the key. 
He said, the things that you're going to speak and preach have to be about denying oneself. And he's saying, if we just do that and surrender, it's going to be a lot easier because no matter what, we got to pick up our cross. Whether you do it today or next year, if you don't, if you wait till next year or the, or the year after, it's just going to, you're not going to receive. You're going to be stuck in a place where you're going to be confused, fighting. And it's just like, pick it up. Say, God, okay, I can't do this, but you get, you give me the grace to do it. And I know that you're going to bring me through because you're the author and finisher of my faith. I got to give you the wheel again. I'm tired of driving this, this car, this ministry, this, this family, this relationship, this whatever you're taking control of and not giving it to God. And Jesus said to his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. For whosoever wants to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever wants to lose his life, for my sake he'll find it. And my job, and if you're preaching the word, is to help people find their life. Not this life out here. Not, not the Joel Osteen life. This life in Christ. That's right. The real gospel. And walk in power. And God is exposing strange voices. Good people. Nice people. Blessed people. Christians. But for some reason... They came in agreement with other voices. They had fear of man. Uh, whatever the uh, whatever it might be, I, God gave me some five things of it. Whatever it was, the, they came in agreement with that, and then another voice started to permeate them. It's happening all over, and that's why He says He's going to spring the spirit of Elijah come and declare, make every crooked way straight. Elijah is the spirit of a messenger, and the spirit of Elijah is here on the earth. And remember. Even Jesus himself had very little people listening to the truth. In John 6, 6, 6, we know the verse says, And the rest of the disciples walked with him no more. And he said the same thing here. Pick up your cross and I yourself, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And without doing that, you'll have no life in you. How can we leave that out and try to drink up the cares of this life and think that we're going to be happy if we're a child of God? If you're not a child of God, you're not going to understand it. And it's all crazy to you and it's all, this is foolishness. So that's how we know that people aren't of God and people are of God. How are you going to know? How do you judge? Well, I judge by the fruit. I judge by the words. I don't care if you're running for president and you won our two, last four, eight years ago and then seven years ago and, and this year. I know who's a real Christian other. This guy, he's a religious Catholic. He knows a lot of word. This guy, this other guy. I don't, honestly, I don't think any of them are really Christians. And we know the one guy, I mean, the fruits of that. I mean, we're not, I'm not calling. He said we can. I mean, he got the one guy. Well, that's the only thing I don't want to bring into the world. And they got this two guys, this guy's praying for statues, blessing statues, and having everyone exalt him, which is totally against the word, because we're to humble ourselves and let Jesus be exalted in us. And, and so he's, and they're pointing fingers, it's like a, the world is in a mess. This religious leader and this worldly leader are pointing fingers at them, at both of them, and the other one, <laughs> we're in trouble. We're not, but trouble is on the horizon in this nation and in the world. And God wants us to be ready, equipped, fully armed with the word of God. Know his voice. Know his voice. Know the word. Because if, if you hear a voice and it doesn't line up with this word, you automatically know it's not his voice. If God's told you to go do something and you got three people coming to you and say, well, it's not because you know his voice that way and that lines up with the word and then someone else comes and the devil sends this person this person, you're like, you just ignore those voices. The voice of a stranger, you will not fall. Strangers, any other voice that's not God's voice, if it's direction in our lives. So let's see what happens. So if anyone don't come after me and deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and what service life for me shall find it. And what man pro is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? That's what the gospel is now, gain the whole world. <laughs> and lose his soul. That's why it's a doctrine of devils. For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of the Father and the angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. And we got the grace. Oh, no works. No works, right? The Bible says faith without works is dead. There's no works for salvation. It's a free gift. But when we come to Christ, it's works. We have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, right? 
There's a lot of works. I can just start bringing them up in my head, but everyone will say, it's finished. It's finished for him. He did everything he's going to do. And if we come and agree with him and we sit in him, we stay in him, it's finished too. The minute we go out, the minute we follow another gospel, we follow another way, we follow a wrong voice, hey, it's all open up again. So you got to learn his voice so you can stay under the shelter of the, uh, uh, of the Almighty and under the wings and stay in Psalms 91 for what is to come. So I give you the keys to the king. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then he charged the disciples. Okay. I did that. And then, or it's right here. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. Jesus walked in that discernment. Knowing right there, and we're supposed to walk in that discernment. We need to know. And it's funny because I met with somebody yesterday, and they're asking me all these questions. I didn't know that I had this. I said, I, "This is why I'm preaching on yesterday. Just wait. It happens in seasoning, in time. Don't get frustrated. You need to trust them that are elder than you. That's why we need real leaders in the body of Christ, real people that are preaching the real gospel, not preaching mixture gospel or preaching about their own gain or out there." about their revelation of mountains that are unbiblical or, or whatever they come up with. And that's the serious thing about it. The word is the very most serious thing we have to follow. Because it's the word that we follow. It's the right word or the wrong word. It's the right messenger or the wrong messenger. And there's all of them out there. And they all look the same if you don't know the spirit. They all dress the same. They have the same titles. The buildings look the same. But something about what they say is different. Something about how they carry themselves is different. And if you don't know that, Satan wants to take you out. He said to Peter, Satan wished to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed to the Father. And that's what God's saying to us. Satan wants to sift people out of here. Sift people out of wherever. Because he wants to get them where, where all, all the sheep have hirelings. He, he doesn't mind you going to the hireling churches. But he wants to get you away from the, the truth. That's So if he can get you confused or get an offense in your heart, he's got you. Then he can get you. Then when he gets you over there, then he can really work on you. And then you really get confused. So you need to know him yourself. You need to get in the word and know his voice. And it doesn't happen overnight. But the more word you get in it, you can reflect it by that. And that's the main thing. And you, you need to fill yourself with the word. If you like to read, just read it. He'll lead you wherever you want it. He wants you to go in the Bible. Just like this message. And then Elaine brought up in the, the same scripture. The spirit is on something. Then I picked the song. And then didn't know she was going to do that. It's all about breaking. I mean, come on. If you don't see the spirit and that, all that stuff that the spirit's moving among us, that we're all one spirit, then you, or you can go to a church that looks spiritual, denies the power of God. And everything they do is in on their bulletin, and nobody else can move in the spirit. You know, oh, she wasn't on. We'll do that foot washing thing next week. You know, that's not on our agenda. We only got so much time. Or you let the spirit come, and we'll be led by the spirit. And those that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. But you got to know what the voice is. It's really simple, but we have to keep hearing it and keep talking about it because so many people they fight God. They're rebellious. They want what they want, no matter what, how much it comes against the word. You know what that's called? It's called rebellion. It brings witchcraft in your life. Because you're taking yourself out of the covering of the word of God. It says anything that exalts itself above the word of God means different from the word of God. Man's opinions don't mean nothing. What does it say? Exalt yourself above it, that we cast it down. We come under the word, and that's our protection. And he is the word. So we're coming in Jesus. It's in Christ. Jesus walked with that discernment. We gotta lose our life to save it. We need to know the word, and false grace messages aren't good enough. Satan will deceive us. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is another spirit that's in the church, big time. It's called the spirit of divination. What is divination? Practicing the knowledge of the future. Prophecy, right? But what spirits are coming from? You got to know the voice to know if it could be accurate, spot on. Because the, the woman that was operating, that was spot on. These men preached the way of the world of salvation. Why did it aggravate Paul? Because he knew it wasn't God's voice. Because Paul was doing something different that day. 
Paul was on another issue. Paul was preaching something different, or Paul was, or or, or that woman was sent by Satan to distract people from focusing on what God was doing or where the Spirit was at. Churches are doing that all the time. They're pimping divination spirits and focusing people on things that they shouldn't be focused on. It says divination here in the in the in the dictionary. It's uh, knowing the knowledge of the future, the unknown, and the supernatural means. Fortune telling, divining, prophecy, prediction, soothsaying, augury, chivalrance, and second sight. You look for divination for guidance. People all in the church are doing it. They don't go to a fortune teller. They're just talking to a false prophet. They go to a prophetic meeting and the guy's prophesying half God, half divination. Acts 16, 16 through 20. And it came to pass when they went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met him. It says met us. And which brought her masters much gain. So they were prostituting her. People were prostituting their gifts all over the body of Christ for money. So that was their, these guys were pimping her. The church is sending prophets out and coming. It's all the same thing going on. The same follow Paul, if it's not the spirit of truth. Paul and us and cried saying, these are men are the servants of the most high God, which show us the way to salvation. Wow, that's accurate, right? Right? That's spot on. That's what Paul was doing. These are the men that God has chosen to show us the way to salvation. Hmm, most of it, and you and Paul get around. You know what happened today? Watch. What are you doing? They're saying the truth. It doesn't matter. He knew. He knew the spirit. He knew the voice. Paul knew that it wasn't his father's voice, even though it was one hundred percent accurate. You need to get there, guys. You need to get there. Spirit of divination is all up in the church right now. With this church here, this building here, this place, God's building a church that the gates of hell will not prevail. Divination won't be allowed to manifest and take over or Jezebel or whatever it might be because it's just not going to happen because God's not going to let it happen. So we got to know and trust God and hear his voice. When everyone hears hear his voice, then God can start bringing a lot more people in and it would be more order. He's training us so we can withhold the revival and the people that need to be saved and come in and be trained up to be sent back out. The woman called crying that these men preached the way of salvation and, and she did this for days. So she's doing saying the same thing, bringing annoyance, disruption. But Paul being grieved, see, what was that? Remember the other night? Something happened? That feeling, the grieving, the grieving. No, the voice. The voice sometimes is a feeling in your gut. You should know it. Something doesn't fit right. And that's what people were saying to, on Facebook. It said, I said, it just doesn't sit right in my spirit. Because they will not follow another voice. The voice of a stranger we won't follow. When we start feeling that, we start wondering. And then we start saying, no, I'm not going to receive that. God's not. So that's, there's, there's that, that Holy Spirit in us, that, that river of living light, the life of God in us. And that one that he takes. Even when you know you're doing something wrong or, you don't, or something, you're about to do something, you feel awkward. You shouldn't do it. You need to hearken to that. Bow to that. It's probably God saying, stop. Conviction. Don't. Don't go that way. Don't say that. So we got to get our control, our flesh under control to submission to the word. All of us are in that process. And none of us can look at it in that, but we need to be willing to be, to go through the process of the refiner's fire. This is God is an all-consuming fire. What does the fire do? It burns our flesh out that our spirit will take full control of our life, our mind, our soul. And we can hear clearly spirit to spirit. And I have all this stuff that we're trying to filter through the Spirit. That's why God wants to get a hold of our eyes and our ears, what we watch, what we say, and what we do, and what we hear. So He can talk to us one-on-one. -on -one and it doesn't have to come from here. We all can hear His voice. And this is what it is every week. So what this training is, we're training to hear His voice. Getting the Word in us continuously. That when someone comes to something, it's like, well, that's not what Jesus is all about. You know, I know the majority's about that and everyone's about that, but when I keep reading the word, it's not about that. What's going on? And the guy, then you start feeling, then you get closer and closer, and then it's like you can spot things a minute. Someone opens their mouth two seconds. I walked in the room that, remember I just said that two weeks ago later, I was like, what is she doing here? Right in the office, let's go. She said, it's not from God. 
Boom. It's so simple. And Laura, you can just you go to the false love church and all that. Love her, love her, let her take you around the mountain, drag you in this, get, do all that, get your money, let the enemy's spirits in her take you around there and waste all your time. And all of a sudden, she's back and another doing the same thing. And it's, oh, that's not love. No, love, Jesus was love. He didn't, he was led by the spirit. And everything he did, it had fruit bearing. And it, and it caused us, no matter if it was a seed and they didn't receive it, it was a seed di divinely ordered by heaven. Just because nothing happens, but we sowed some seeds yesterday. But they were divinely, according by heaven. A hug can be divinely ordained by heaven or it can be done by the flesh. And that's what's going on. And this did many days, and Paul was being grieved, turned and said to her, to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour, so the same time. That's where God wants to take us on our authority and our power. We know what we just seen here last, was it Friday night? Wednesday. 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 It was pretty rough stuff. And um, we've never seen that much of a manifestation. But we need to get to a point, God wanted to make us hungry, that we... We're going to get that thing out fully. Yes. Legions and deaf and dumb spirits. It's deep stuff. You need to really hear his voice and you really need to be close to the Father. Yes. And don't think we're any better than who was walking with Jesus. He's teaching us all. We're all under the master's teachings. And so these, she did this for many days and he was grieved. And then when her master saw that her hope for, their hope for gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying these men being Jews trouble the city to God that's good trouble the world say oh you're a troublemaker you should obey the laws of the land you should you know you should you know the Bible says all obey all ordinances all. yeah that's being led by the letter Paul never obeyed the laws they made when it came when, against what God told them to do <laughs> Religion will say, well, we have to obey, pray for... Well, when the Antichrist finally comes in power, you keep praying for him. I'm going to be running and, and for my life and telling people he's the devil. <laughs> people. we got to wake up. Oh, pray for your leaders. Well, one day the Antichrist will be the leader of the world. So, are you going to know that? Or are you going to say, well, we still have... Are you going to even know it? Are you going to know it? He said, when the son of perdition sits in the temple as he's God, pretending to be God... Are you going to know it? Or are you going to think Jesus came back another way because you don't know the voice and you don't even know the Bible? He's coming in the air. Just remember that. He's not coming and sitting in, in, a, in a temple being worshipped. And he's not going to be put in on, on all the TVs and all the malls and these, sin, you know, like the Star Wars, like the, not the Star Wars, the Star Wars, where they sing, what do they call those things? Spotting everywhere where you can do the person can, like in those... The, Holograms. Holograms, yeah. Holograms are going to be everywhere. Phones. That's why the media, so when Satan, everyone has a phone, everyone give, government give you phones because you need the whole world to bow, to bow to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. That's the Antichrist. Daniel said, no, that's not, I'm not bowing. God told me not to bow. Oh, what do you mean? God, it's good. He's feeding the hungry. He wants to make peace in the war. God said, God said, blessed are the peacemakers for there's the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, oh, the Bible says, judge not, lest you be judged. Uh, oh, you know, and then other ones said, oh, we know a couple scriptures, so, yeah, that must be, he's good. He wants to help people. God's all about help. You know, he wants to, you know, we want to build walls. Uh, God wants to build bridges, you know. That wasn't God's voice. Sounds good. It's biblical. It makes sense, right? We don't, we don't. God builds the spiritual bridges. Believe me, God wants to protect there's a big wall. God built a wall in Jerusalem. <laughs> Nehemiah built a wall. Right. You know, <laughs> all these people come out with this stuff. It's not God's voice. It sounds good. It's, it's in the Bible. That's the Antichrist spirit. Do you know the difference? You need to know him. You need to know the word. False teachers and preachers all in the, in the church right now. Getting everybody focused on everything but the cross. Yeah. That's what's going on. And then God raises up messengers and they try to tell them, they stone them. He said, I wish that I'd take you like a like a mother, and then but you reject me. It's all the same. So he says, like a, like a mother hand and take you, but you you're gonna persecute me? You're gonna 
put me on the cross and you're going to kill me. But if you would just have come to me, I would take you in. God's saying that right now to the church. I got apostles and prophets, the real ones out there, speaking the truth, getting you ready, getting you in a place of safety, just like Noah was building the ark. And he was a preacher of righteousness and everyone was mocking, whatever. It's not going to happen. All It's all here. And then one day, that's why I sit on the post, we're going to become the majority. We might be the minority now, but the kingdom, the few will become the many because everyone else will perish. And Jesus is serious because serious times. I mean, the news is not even letting you know what's really going on, but you should know by the Spirit. The times it says, you know when the summers, the seasons, when the seasons are going to come and the fruit, you should know, look at Israel and know what's going on. Everyone's got you looking here, looking to make money, looking to do this. And it's getting worse and worse at the end because that's how Satan is. He is the prince of the air and the ruler of this world. And you can't serve him. We found out what man, mammon was last night. It isn't even money. It's a form of anything that you idol. You cannot serve idols, football, money, anything, and serve God. You're going to despise the one and hate the other. You're going to displease or reject the one and cling to the other, whatever it says you know the scripture. It's serious. So we got to know his voice. Because it's not like, well, you should be a good person. And God says, I'm giving you ample time. I'm giving you preachers of righteousness. I'm giving you the word you have that's still in your hands. It's not, you can't blame it on God. It's going to be blamed on you because there's circuits and there's truth. But if you really say, God, I don't want to hear any other voice but your voice, he's not going to give you a, a, a stone. He's not going to give you a serpent. See, but people really don't want that. They act like, well, I just yeah. don't know. Well, you don't know because you don't want to know. Because if you're hungry enough and you're thirsty enough and you want to know the truth and you fear the Lord, you're going to cry out to him and you're going to get it. Because he's not, he's perfect. He would not withhold anyone. He's no respecter of persons. No respecter of persons. You can rob a bank tomorrow and the guy can go in jail and he'll give him everything he's given you if he's hungry and wants it. Murder the whole, the whole school and come and repent and ask for the Holy God truth and go into the kingdom of God and we have the world doesn't think they don't understand that the king what do you mean so people in the church all the time just think they got it all going on everything's right and all of a sudden it's not and then this guy comes murders 50 people finds Jesus three months three weeks later in jail gets born again goes in the kingdom someone sits in the church their whole life and goes to hell and is a good person their whole life but just wasn't hungry, didn't want the truth, and let Satan deceive them, and let people turn the truth into a lie, and that's what's going on right now, everywhere, all over this country. Not on my watch. God's not going to say to me, well, you withhold the truth. Why'd you water down? Why'd you sugarcoat the gospel? I want him to say, you said it. You may be not perfect, but I was working your character, but you said everything I told you to say. That's what's important. You didn't withhold the truth because it was about you. You let it go. You let the truth go, and then you loved when I moved you to love, and you, you know, you were led by the Spirit, and you discerned my, and you followed my voice, right? Right into the end. Say, say this, say that. Be quiet, be quiet. His voice says, don't say nothing. You don't say nothing. Jesus was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Sometimes he said some stuff. Sometimes he just kept quiet. And he, they said, what do you do? He says, you say that I am. I mean, he had the truth. He could have just let him off. And he just said, the father said, shh, don't say nothing. We need to get to that place. I mean, that is a good place to be. And what other voice wants, or your flesh wants, we say, no, I have self-control. The fruits of the spirit come in abiding in obedience with him. So that's what we're, that's what's going on right now. I don't know what they know that, but God's refining us, the, the Holy Spirit in the fire. We're being changed into His image. We're getting ready for everything that's about to break loose on the earth. And we're going to be messengers that are going to help people. Many people are going to get saved. And it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be exciting. And it might take our life. But I, I know this. If, if Just like Paul was so full of the Word and everything and, and, and had such a plan for his life, God will spare him to the end as much as you can be used. You can't be used much. Where's God? Let, let him be a martyr. That's builds the church too. Kill him, kill him, kill him. I can't. He doesn't know the word. He'll get deceived. Let him be a martyr. I love him. Or what? Oh, that's my. He's full of the word. He's bold. He's that. Don't touch him. He disappears. You disappear like Jesus. It wasn't your. That's part of the. That's that's something you should look forward to. Get full of the word so you don't have to die early. 
I guarantee you, the more words you know, the more God's going to use you. <clears throat> and when it's your time, it's your time. One thing we can't, the devil can't give us that. He cannot give us our life. He can prolong this life on the earth if we let him. It could be one week. As many people, it's going to be like three years. They're going to think they're going to have this long life and it's over. Three years. Oh no, I can't. I don't want to die right now. I want to save this life. I got too much. Okay, I deny Jesus. And then, what are they? And they think in peace, seven years, then three more years to the whole world. For three lousy years in, in peace, they're going to give up. Three years, it doesn't matter. Let them take it in the first of the seven years or four years in. In that time when the Antichrist there, it's just seven years or so, whatever. I'm not going to yeah. get into all that. So know that. So you know, who cares? It's only seven more years left. I can't even... I won't even get my retirement money anyway. So, you know, seven, I mean, if you know the Bible, you know him, you're already going to know about when he's coming, seven years, when he gets sits in the throne. So, okay, well, I'm 52. I can't even collect. And you're like, oh, take my life. Anyway, you know, but if you don't know him, you don't know his voice, and you think you got all this time, and you're believing a lie, and you're following the, the spirit of the age, it's called deception. And it's going to be a horrible time. Horrible day, so I cry out for everyone to follow his voice. Let's check this out. Acts being grieved, and then the master's a revelation 2:20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because they suffer. So he's talking to this church, and he says, You suffer the woman, call herself a prophetess. The woman Jezebel. So she calls herself, she says she's coming from God. Anyone that's speaking from God is a, pro a woman and is a, pro a prophetess to call him because it was a woman if a man prophet. To teach and to what? Seduce my servants to commit fornication. To eat things sacrificed to idols. What kind of idols are there in the world, right? The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, um, business, money, mammon, right? All those things. It's like, it's okay. You can have idols and still, because God wants you blessed. You know, he does. He does want you blessed, but not like that. So they mix these teachings in with the word of God. It's like a mixed meat, you know? It's like mystery meat. If you've ever been in jail, like, the, every Sunday, they go, it's the mystery meat. Now. It's like, just all this stuff thrown together, like ham, and it's like, and it's like, this, like everything left over, and it's like, ah, it's, it's mystery meat. And that's basically what, what's going on. You don't know what you're going to get? And it smells, too. It smells awful. It's like cat food. Anyone been locked up before? You know what I'm talking about? I preach to a bunch of good, good. Amen. Well, come on, huh? The mystery me in New York. They got. I mean, every place I've gone had the mystery me. Anyway. Spam. Yeah. The worse than spam. Well, worse than spam. Cat food. You little hard things in it, like bones and stuff. I don't know what it was. We'll have that next week. Actually, next week we're gonna have so we don't forget. Smoke, what this turkey. Smoke turkey. Smoke turkey. Smoke turkey and yeah, we eat ham sometimes. Smoked ham. For all those that think we're legalists, we do eat ham too, so. <laughs> First Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Check this out. Now I speak expressly, especially to the latter times. What are the latter times? Well, today more than yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. They shall depart from the faith, giving heed, what? Giving over themselves to what? Here it is, other voices. To seducing spirits. How do you get seduced? Through the voice, through the preacher, through the spokesman, through the, through your flesh, right? So, and, and bring in doctrines of devils. Speaking here, speaking what lies. So you got to know the truth to know what the lie is, right? So that's the word. This is God's truth. And if we fill the truth, we can pick it up. How do you say, well, how do you know already? Like someone can talk two seconds. Because the word and the focus, and, and that's where God wants to get us all. It's not something that you just walk into, but God's trick because he loves us, and he's not going to let us know that. But we have to be sheep. We can't be wolves. We can't have agendas. We can't have things in our own mind. We can't want to do our own thing on the side and think we're going to be God's sheep. And just think because we said a prayer one day that we're a sheep. No, it's sheep. Follow him. His sheep follow him. And the voice of a stranger won't follow you can't be following everything else and think you're God's sheep. <laughs> and even, I saw this thing and it was like, 
it was really messed up because the, the sheath went over somewhere and was spinning. I don't know what it was, but the mother would just, right after birth, would bl cover in the one sheath and kept kicking that one away and rejected it. The mother, are you, anyone seen that thing ever? Yeah. You seen that? And I kept, it's like so mean. I, it was horrible. Like poor little sheep. He's like, because he got another smell. He went somewhere else. There's some serious stuff. Start studying the sheep. Almost done. Second Peter 2 1. Oh, and it says this speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their, their conscience seared with a hot iron. Second Peter 2 1 through 9. But there were many false prophets among the people. Even so shall there be false teachers among you. Anyone trying to tell you what the word means and doesn't do it accurately to the truth is a false teacher. It isn't just another doctrine. It's someone in the church that has another. They're teaching. If you're teaching the roots and all that and, got, and, and, and you're teaching people and you're getting them under the law, you're a false teaching. Jesus is teaching freedom right now, teaching us how to set ourselves from the world. We've got too much to worry about than keeping all the traditions and all that stuff. We've got a big things going on. We've got to focus on hearing his voice. That's what the teachings are this day. Hear his voice, obey him. Hear his voice, obey him. The voice of a stranger. If you don't know, you've got to ask people, what do you think of that? And then you've got to trust them and they'll tell you. That's not God. Until you finally go, oh, that's not. And all of a sudden you're doing it and you don't have to be dependent. But that's why there's... The kingdom. That's why God sets apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the raising up people so they can basically hear his voice too. And the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Be raised up and then they can guard other sheep, other sheep and protect the younger ones. It's always happening. Second Peter 2, 1 through 9. Among them people shall false teachers among you who shall privately shall bring in damn, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord. Heresies are other teachings that are that are not according to the word and bring upon themselves strict swift destruction. As many shall follow their see they're not following God's laws. These, he's, this is for Christians. This is the love letter to the church. This is Peter talking to the church. We know the word. We know where the world is following. They're following their flesh, their belly, their their idols, the spirit of the age. We're just talking to the church. So don't think you you can be deceived and follow other voices. Follow their pernicious ways by the reason whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So someone comes and preaches the truth, and they speak evil of you and speak evil of that, and it came from God. That's trouble. we got to be careful before we open our mouth, before we know what exactly is, is, is from God and not. And, and that's what they say. And I'm big, that's a big thing problem about media and Facebook and stuff. People get a little people following it, and they just, and they're just, everyone's got an opinion. But only God doesn't have everyone on there speaking. He's got a few people trying to clear the air and going on there, doing it, releasing the word and coming back and going back in the cave and getting whatever because it's, a, it's an outlet. There's outlets everywhere. TV, he's got some people on TV and the devil's got some people on TV. They're both preaching. One's got an agenda. One's building his kingdom and you got someone setting you apart, uh, denying yourself, getting you ready and trying to get you to hear God's voice. You got to know which is which. Amen. Is that, yeah, they look, they got a suit, they got a title, they got a ministry, they got a ministry team, they pray for people, they do everything, just like, but what, are they speaking God's voice? And I thank God, I was like, why am I always in the pound and listen to the word, listen to the word? Take, get the seeds, it's like, he like drove into like constantly, and now I know why. He was putting the word, putting the word. Before he wanted me up here, he wanted more word, more word. And then when I hear someone, now I can hear someone that's like, and now I can say to the sheep, nope, that's not God. How do you, who do you, what do you think you are? Well, God's brought me to that place where I hear his voice and he can trust me. And that's not God. Well, who? Oh, you know, they get mad, whatever. God says, good, good job. It's very simple. But if we know his voice, we're not going to get mad at the messenger. We're going to get that's right. set apart. And honestly, if Jesus came right back right now, today, <laughs> so many people would end up in hell in the church because they're they're not they're not following, they're not serving them, they're following their own idols, their own thing, their own doctrines. God's going to shake this nation, shake the world, so He can get them back, shake them out of the devil's hands. That's what's going on right now. And there's a great line in the sand. There's a great divide going on, 
And God's like, get on this side now because you don't want to be on that side when I shake because I'm going to get Satan, you think you got a lot of my children now, but I'm going to get a lot of them back. Right. And I don't, and he's like, and he's trying to woo them back right now. Be in love with the truth. Don't be so rebellious. Listen to, to my voice. Humble yourself. Do this and that. It's like, because I don't want you to do that. I don't want, what, what, what parent wants to bring the rod and hurt? The, no, they want them to listen the first time, right? They don't want to, oh man, I can't wait to beat my kid this Sunday. I can't, I'm just waiting for him to do something wrong. He's like, please do it right. Cause I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to. You know, I'm going to have to instruct you because you're not, you know, if you do that again, you're going to get spanked. And it's like, it's like, if, and it's like, if you, when his voice and you fear the Lord, you're like, no, I'm not going to do it again. And then even if God sees that, they're struggling. It's like, he's going to help you. All right, get away. Boom. Relationships. God is going to help you hear his voice. It's not like he does. It's like a mystery and he's hiding right. somewhere and it's like, he's changing on you saying, hey, he's like loud and clear, mm -hmm. but people don't. Here. And many shall follow the pernicious ways by the reason whom the way of evil shall be spoken of, and through covenants and through feign covenous words and feign words make merchandise of you. See, they don't care. They're hirelings. They'll make merchandise of you. Just fill it. Got 20,000 members. Just bring the money. I'm, I'm giving some word. I mean, they, it's up to them. They need to go home. I, they got to work out their own salvation. I mean, woe is to them, the teachers and preachers that stand in here in a pulpit. And <laughs> I honestly think it says it's going to be worse for them. That they, so there must be stages in hell that are worse for, for people that do that. I cry out to God, please keep us, keep us, keep us. Through covenants and vain words, make merchandise whose judgment is now... Long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These are teachers and preachers of the word he's talking about. For God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them into hell and delivered them. That's why God says it's the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom. Because you get the fear of the Lord, just fear him. Because he's not going to let you get deceived. And spared not the old world, and saved Noah and the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of, that, of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, and condemned them and overthrew, making them an example unto them that should live ungodly. I'm telling you this, there's a season coming. Many in the church are going to be made an example, so many will be turned from ungodly, and it's going to be sad. I'm telling you, I've seen it. Prophets are going to come in, and people that have been preaching all this Doctrines of devils are going to fall down in the pulpit. He's going to bring the word and all the people because he's going to count the, the leader, judge the leader for not preaching the, the real word. And so the whole congregation is going to save. And it's going to bring fear on the church just like Ananias is fire. So what? Let, let one be sacrificed so 500 can convert. God knows what he's doing. Oh, that's not God. Well, read the book of Acts. This is serious. Or we can just kind of follow our own voice or follow the voice of a stranger. Spared not the old world, the eighth person, and it says, turning the cities over again, and deliver just lot with the filthy, with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, that's what it says, and seeing and hearing and vexed his righteous soul from day to day from their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly, the godly. And then it says that great gain, got godliness with uh, contempt, godliness with contempt is great gain. We stand right here, godliness out of the temptations and reserve the unjust in the day of judgment to be punished. So we see what is the focus? The kingdom or the world? The spirit or the soul? Denying self or saving your life? That's, there's two gospels going on right now. Which one are you listening to? I know all you hear. We're trying to preach the right one. Trying because nobody's perfect. But God knows no secrets. First John 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out. Wherefore we know that this, they are the spirit of God, that every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesses not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Wherefore you have heard that it should come, and even now 
is already is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They that are of the world speak like the world, and the world hears them. So you're wondering, why are so many people in the church? Because they're of the world. Because if they were here, they'd hear his voice. Just because they have a title and they're hanging out with a bunch of Christians out, and they're hanging around the cross, doesn't mean they're not of the world. Come on, there's people that run for office all the time that say, I'm a crook. Give me a break. Come on. And people say, well, you said it is. Who are us? To, we're called to judge their words, judge their ways, because they're a voice, and we're not one to follow them. No. It's fine for them to be a leader of the nation, of the world, but don't, don't speak to me about godly things or spiritual things, because I, you have nothing for me. What, what can you give me spiritually when, you, when you're, your father's the devil? <laughs> nothing, right? Except confusion. So you're wondering why the confusion, because many are saying they're of God, but they're not. Because by their works and by their deeds and by, the, by their words, they deny him. And they bring confusion. So that's why God is dividing. It's really simple. We need to keep hearing it and saying it because people are struggling. I hear people every week. Oh, I'm so confused. I don't know God's voice. Don't worry about it. Humble yourself. Trust it. Trust him. And he's not going to let you go astray. And it's really simple. And keep asking him. God, fill me. And keep reading the word. And it comes. And you'll grow up and be a strong oak tree in the land. When any storm comes, you're going to know. You're planted and rooted ground in him. Second Peter 1, through 20. It says, Know what God heareth us, and then that does it. It's the spirit. So, you know. I know right away. Why are you always fighting the word? You must not be of God. And if you are, you're very rebellious. So you got a problem with God. I'm not going to let you have a problem with me. I'm going to waste my time. If you already got a problem with God, I know that I'm not going to be able to help you. You better get right with God, and then maybe someone can help you. 2 Peter 1, 21, For the prophecy came not of all the time, but the will of men. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God. We got to be moved by the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians 14, 29 through 33. Everyone can stand up. We're going to do some declarations today. Let the prophet speak. That's why I've been telling everyone. Two and three. And let others judge. So we can't be whispering in people's ears. I know this. We can't be. We need to speak for it so everyone can protect one another. Even me, I don't want to go, but you know, if it's something personal, get somebody or whatever. But we need it to be open because there's we could be missing it. None of us are perfect. If any anything be revealed to one another that sit by, first hold his peace, for you may all prophesy one by one, that we all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You know what that means? If you're going to speak from God, the spirit is subject to the prophet. It means you can hold it. It's in you. If it's come from God, you can wait on it. It's subject. You, you can't, you know, it's all blurs to God's not. He's a God of order. And he'll move the spirit. We'll move and you'll have your time. Unless it's not God, then you got to get it out. And everyone's like, because the spirit is not going to be talking to one person and another person over here or over there, totally different thing. This, that's why we pray that song, one voice and one accord, because it takes confusion away. God might be on the topic of his love this day, and then one day it could be about the fire of God. So the Holy Spirit's not gonna be telling one person love and then the other person fire. And so even though both of them are from God, and that's how we learn. And that's how we learn and grow. So this is the great thing is God wants the church to be full of the gifts, full of, of speaking, but all but from his voice. And we don't want soothsaying or divination or anything. And that's why we need to come under him and his voice. Play the um, um the last song again. I'm just gonna make some declarations if you want to decree after me. 
Lord Jesus, I give you my ears. I give you my tongue. Lord Jesus, I ask you to expose every other voice that's not your voice coming through media, coming through pulpits, coming through Facebook, coming through TV, coming through people, any door. I ask you, God, to show me your voice, to lead me in your way. I ask you to expose every lying spirit, every spirit of divination, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit that's making me run after things, every spirit that wants me to save my life. Every spirit that wants me to save my soul, only your cross can do it. Jesus, I command by your word and your blood, and I command by the name of Jesus that every lying voice, every other voice, every strange voice, I cast it out of my imagination. Out of my heart, out of my, heart. Out of my mind, out of, my mind. Out, of anywhere, out of anywhere that would affect me, that would affect me. and that would affect people around me. And, and, I around me. and I ask you, Jesus, to fill me with your truth, with your, truth. With your, voice. With your voice, and lead me, and lead me. In, your direction. in your direction. And if anybody, and if anybody that, calls himself, that calls himself a messenger of God, messenger of God or calls God. himself calls a teacher of the gospel, of and they're not it's not your voice. Not your voice. I, ask you I ask you to show me, to show me. Direct, me. direct me, move me, move me. in your direction. Your direction. God, God, I give you, I give you. My, eyes, my eyes, my ears, my, ears. my heart, my, heart. My, mind. my mind. I do, I do, I, do. I, do. I give it to you, God. Even when I try to take it back, even when I try to lead my own way, God, if I'm not ready, if I'm not a forerunner, let me fall behind right voices that I might not be astray. Father, I give my life to you already. Do not let it be swift, sifted away. I pray for myself, for my family, for my loved ones. I ask you for your voice. And I will not follow the voice of a stranger. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive your love, God. I receive your truth, God. I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the dead. And I believe that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In every tongue that rise against me, Father God, I ask you to cast them down. Every tongue that comes from any other spirit, from the from the. From the Antichrist spirit, from a lying spirit, from a spirit of divination, I rebuke them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I set myself to hear the voice of the Father, the voice of Jesus Christ, and the voice of a stranger I will not follow in the name of Jesus. Satan, get behind me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.